Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We did an episode not too long ago on Chardonnay from France. Now we're going to look at a very sacred area to many people, and that's Red Burgundy or Pinot Noir. Now, you know, why do Pinot Noir? Well, first of all, we uh, Thanksgiving is coming up in, uh, believe it or not, a couple of months, which is pretty amazing. We're going to make it through the year, guys. We are. Hopefully things will go back to normal at some point. Anyway, so we're going to Burgundy to look at Pinot Noir. Now, it's interesting that Burgundy kind of sets a standard for Pinot Noir for a lot of people. But there are a lot of people that like California Burgundy because they're big. They have the California love handles from the sunshine. They're more powerful. There's people that like Pinot from um, uh, ah, Oregon. <laughs> Sorry. The Willamette Valley in Oregon. They love it there. Uh, that is probably the closest you're going to get to Burgundy-style Pinot Noir. So we're going to look at two Pinot Noir from the land of Burgundy. In particular, the Cote d'Or. Uh, this is a <clears throat> 2017 Stefan Mar Maurice Domaine de Priore Somni Le Bon. Now, Somni Le Bon, we talked a little bit, remember that the bone is you have in the Cote d'Or, you have uh, Nuit Saint George up in the north, the bone down in the south. Somni is a town, a village in that region of the bone. And it's near Bone, the actual town of Bone. How do we know that? Le, Sauvigny, Le, Le means, and it's an old French word for near. So Sauvigny is near the Bone, the village of Bone. There you go. $29. 2017, decent vintage in Burgundy. So I'm excited to try these. One of the things you'll notice the difference in uh, red Burgundy or Bourgogne is the color. And I noticed that right off the bat. Remember they have a lot of limestone here. Cote d'Or is, is like a ridge of limestone. So you have that limestone, sand and gravel there that affects the terroir and the wine itself. And you know I always say you know screw those people that don't believe in terroir. I think it's very important to how the wine. The only thing that can screw up terroir is the winemaking style. Alright, look at the color. Now I don't know if you can see that but it is fairly light in color. I can almost see through the glass. I can see through the glass, actually. Um, Domaine de Pierre. Uh, well, there you go. Let's see what we get on the nose. Get raspberries right off the bat, a little strawberry. You're definitely going to get more minerality, usually, in old world wines. Yeah, strawberries, raspberry, I get a little hint of crushed rock. This one has a little bit of a guts to it on the nose, which is quite interesting. Um, I wrote right over the alcohol percentage, so I'm not even... Oh, 13% by alcohol. A little licorice coming through and a little kind of a soap element, like maybe a strawberry soap. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. Very expressive on the nose, I like that. Very, very elegant, light. This is what you expect from a burgundy, a red burgundy, Pinot Noir from this area. A little bit of spice action on the backside. A little bit of Asian spice, which is a very typical of red burgundy wines. I like that spiciness on it. Very, very light, very elegant. This is why a lot of people like to have it with turkey. There's no tannins in this to speak of, really. They don't show up. It's very soft, very elegant. It matches up a lot with the foods of Thanksgiving. It's also good with ham. I like it with ham. And of course, salmon. Of course. So strawberry and ra red raspberry notes come through. Um, there's good acidity, but it's very, very light. You know, this is just a, dances very lightly on the palate, but in a good way. 
Um, it depends on what you're looking like. If you love California Pinot Noir with all those, you know, love handles on them, you're not going to like this as much. This is what a lot of red burgundy drinkers are looking for. This really kind of lighter style, um, freshness on the palate. They like the strawberry and raspberry notes, a little bit of spice on the backside. A little earth and bark too is coming through right on the back of the mid palate, which is kind of cool. If you think about it, this is kind of earthy, which is good. I think this is a well-made Pinot Noir. It's very light, but has expressive notes of raspberries and strawberries. has that earthiness, a little bit of minerality, and it has that spice on the backside. It's not going to blow a lot of people out of the water, but it's what you expect from Burgundy. That being said, you see, you have to be careful. When you're a wine critic, like I, you know, review wines and give my grade on them, you have to divorce yourself from your own palate in a way, in a, in a big way. You know, I like Zinfandel, I've said that many times. So with this one, yeah, I'm going to go straight up B on this. I think it's a solid Pinot Noir from the land of Burgundy, Bourgogne. 29 bucks. That's a good price, too. That is a very fair price. This way, you could chill this just a little bit if you get that picture. Let's move on. The Secret de Famille. Bourgogne Cote d'Or Pinot Noir. Okay, so this is Cote d'Or, just generalizes the whole region of Cote d'Or. $27. Albert Bichot. There you go. Albert Bichot, I haven't seen that name in a while. A little rinse. So this is kind of like if we say Columbia Valley. You know, it could be sourced from all over Columbia Valley, Yakima, uh, Rattlesnake Hills, Chelan, no, not Chelan, excuse me, sorry, mistake there, uh, Horse Seven Hills, any of those areas. Well, this could be sourced from anywhere in the Cote d'Or. So it's a general Appalachian statement there. Let's see what, oh, color first. This is actually a little darker than the first one. It is 12.5% alcohol by volume. So these are usually lighter in alcohol, usually 17 good vintage. This has this has bark and earth and dirt all over the nose. Slight uh, cherry and strawberry notes coming through, but this is very, very earthy on the nose. There's kind of a candied strawberry thing coming through as well. But yeah, a dirty nose. Bark, you know, that beauty bark sort of thing going on. Let's see what we get on the palate. This is a... Uh, Cherry and strawberry sweet tarts. This is a tart little mother. I mean, it's a, it's tart, but it's not mouth puckering. It's just got those high tones, almost crunchy acidity on it. There's a nice little beam of Asian spice right in the mid palate coming through underneath. It finishes with kind of that cherry, strawberry, almost a little bit cranberry action on it in a sweet tart sort of way, you know what I mean? But not, you know, it is very bright on the palate. Let's just say that. The earth notes kind of come through at the back side. This is, again, not a Pinot Noir for those who like California Pinot Noir. You would not like this at all. But for those of you who like uh, burgundies, red burgundies, more old world style Pinot Noir, this is pretty good. It needs food. You can have this one without it, but this baby needs food. I'd love to have this with a big fatty fillet of uh, king salmon. This would be perfect. That brightness would meld well with the salmon. I'd be really, really good. Now, getting to Thanksgiving, this would be good if you had stuffing because you'd need that kind of earthy, you know, salty 
thing going on with the stuffing and the turkey to make this work. Almost tart to a fault, in my opinion. It, it, it lacks a roundness, a, a, a integration of other things. It just kind of is very, very tart. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go C plus on this one. Um, certainly it's well made, but at the same time, you know, kind of in that one-dimensional kind of tartness that comes through. But I do like the red flower. I'm going to go C plus, B minus. There's some good red flower notes in here. If you had a little bit of food with this, it would be pretty decent. All right, there you go. Two Pinots from the land of Burgundy at a very reasonable price, $29, $27, because you can spend a boatload of money on Pinot from this area. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Getting a lot of subscribers. I'm really excited about that. You keep watching, and I'll keep up with you spend your wine dollars wisely.